This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We probably haven't done enough on this show to talk about same game parlays throughout this year because same game parlays are objectively a pretty fun way to play things from a betting perspective and they seem to be pretty popular with all of you out there. So I want to do a better job next year of focusing in on some of these and trying to identify spots I think are good values. There are a lot of bad same game parlays out there and we want to avoid those as being hopefully smart betters. Today, I'm going to dive in to Super Bowl 58 and outline what I think are some potentially good same game parlays for this game, not just from a, I think this like from a matchup perspective, but also from a process perspective outline, the thought process I want to put into SGP before I place them in some angles you can take and things like that. When you are trying to, to bet same game parlays for this week, whether it be if you got a, a no sweat, same game parlay offer or whatever it may be trying to find good angles to get some good bets out there for this game, but then also go through the thought process. So you can hopefully apply that to next year as well. Welcome on into covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and FanDuel research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel research here to dig into same game parlays around two. Super Bowl 58 at FanDuel Sportsbook and let you know which one stand up to me based on my thought process and angles I like and overall thoughts on this game. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder, we already have a couple of shows up for this week on the FanDuel Podcast Network to get you ready for Super Bowl 58. We had Dr. Ed Fang with us on Monday, breaking down his thoughts on what his numbers say about this game, where he sees value for this week, and much more, talking some props as well. And of course, Joe Ostrowski joined us as well on Tuesday, breaking down his thoughts on this game. Joe has a very fun mind. It was fun to pick his brain on all the weird props that I don't know anything about. So uh, check out both those in the Covering the Spread podcast feed and over on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV Plus to get those shows and get Get, uh, their thoughts on this game coming up later on this week we're gonna have ryan williams and tom vecchia with us on thursday breaking down their thoughts on uh player props to this game that won't be up until late thursday night because uh, we're gonna record thursday night for that one so if you're looking for a podcast in your feed Thursday during the day, wait till that night. And then on, uh, on Friday, we're going to talk some live betting with Ed Miller as well. All right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. If you like what you hear, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And again, check us out at FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. Happy Super Bowl to all those who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snack and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today you get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming, hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text hope y in New York. Now, before we dig in here, I do want to give a quick disclaimer. I'm recording this on uh, earlier in the week as a result of the fact that I am off on Wednesday. So hopefully things are pretty stagnant from an odds perspective and things have not shifted. But I do want to give that disclaimer of I'm recording this earlier in the week. So hopefully lines have not moved so too much. 
But overall, let's dig into same game parlays and the thought process here. And with same game parlays, as you know, if you're a seasoned sports better, you need all legs to hit in order for the bet to pay out. This is a downside because it does mean you're betting into a lot of separate markets and all those markets have a hold atta- attached to them. But it also does work to our advantage. Every time you put a leg into a same game parlay, you have to make the assumption that bet hits. Otherwise, the rest does not matter. So if this bet doesn't hit, the other ones don't matter. You can lose every leg. You can lose one. Doesn't matter. Result is the same. This allows you to narrow down the scope of possibilities. If I assume that bet X does hit, how does that influence other markets that are out there? Which events are more likely to occur as a result of bet X hitting? FanDuel does know which bets correlate, so the odds will reflect this for sure. But that's still the thought process you need to go into this with, assuming each leg hits and assuming that that happens, you want to make sure those bets play well together. We can go in with an assumption and use that assumption to build on our, pl- our parlay, an assumption, a thesis, however you want to phrase it. We can kind of go in there with that angle and decide what markets will be values if that assumption is true. So we target events that are more likely to, to happen if our assumption is correct. And we're going to go through some options for that for today. These are angles I think are viable for this specific game. And we'll use those angles to hunt for value on the board. I'm going to start things off with the most boring one. And then we'll hopefully make things a bit more exciting from there. But the big angle for me entering Super Bowl 58 is news we got last week that the Chiefs activated the practice window for Jarek McKinnon. McKinnon is not a lock to play, uh, but I would assume he probably will, given they activated him last week. He had surgery, uh, I think, earlier on this month, but it sounds like he'll probably be able to go. And we know the Chiefs like McKinnon, and he has a very big effect on Isaiah Pacheco. If we look at the games that Pacheco played at McKinnon earlier on this year, he averaged 77.6 yards from scrimmage per game, so rushing plus receiving. Without McKinnon, it's 109.7 in Pacheco's full games. That is a massive difference. And the red zone role for Pacheco is very different too. So if we assume that McKinnon is going to play, that does ding the red zone expectations for Pacheco at a 32% red zone share with McKinnon versus 55% without him. Now, I don't think we'll see Pacheco's role change as much here because he's played very, very well. He was actually increasing his snap rate during that time anyway, when uh, they kind of just fade CEH out. Now, unfortunately, at FanDuel Sportsbook right now, I don't see any CEH markets up, so I can't just fade uh, Clyde edwards Elaire. I can't go that route. But what I can do is to expect a dip in Pacheco's passing game work. I don't think we'll see it from a rushing perspective, because again, he's played pretty well, but the passing game work could dip. I think we'll still see McKinnon be the early down back. I think we'll see zero CH if, if McKinnon plays, but passing game work for Pacheco could go away. And honestly, the passing game work per, in the playoffs hasn't been great anyway, because McKinnon or Pacheco, I should say, has not top 14 yards in any of the three games. So if we assume that McKinnon plays, how would that impact other markets in this matchup? The big one is that it'd be Pacheco's passing game work. And those markets, honestly, are pretty high. I think right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook, the big one is total receptions for Pacheco. That's at three and a half right now. Under is minus 188, so they do assume that under that that, that's a big number. But I feel pretty good in that mark if we assume McKinnon plays because Pacheco averaged just 2.9 targets per game in games with McKinnon earlier on this year. And it's at 3.7 in the games without McKinnon. So that one seems pretty good to plug in there, even at minus 188. We can also go towards the yardage because, again, the yardage hasn't been huge. Now, adding on yardage to a an under, when we have the uh, receptions already in there. That's not going to change things a whole lot. So keep that in mind. You're not swaying things a ton by putting in the yardage. But, hey, it does add things a little bit and can't help us there. So we can go Pacheco under 16 and a half receiving yards along with the under three and a half on the receptions. I do want to reiterate, though, that I think that, that Pacheco's rushing game workload should still be pretty good given – He's played well. The Chiefs have been effective running the football and McKinnon not nearly as big of a factor there as he would be in the passing yardage department. So I want to take the over actually on Pacheco's rushing yardage because the Niners have struggled against the rush so far this year. And if it's a neutral-ish script, which we should see here, then I think they'll be able to run the ball pretty effectively here. 
So we can take advantage of Pacheco being a running back and getting less work in the passing game if we assume that McKinnon is back for this game. If we pair those three bets together, Pacheco under three and a half receptions, under 16 and a half receiving yards and over 67 and a half rushing yards, that gets us to plus 266 for that same game parlay. Not a huge payout by any means, but it is still a way to take advantage of the fact that McKinnon is coming back and will likely eat into Pacheco's passing game work, but not eat into his rushing work. So to me, I think that's a good bet to take and a good process to go through with the Chiefs backfield, potentially in flux for this Super Bowl 58. So that's the first one we'll go with for today. Again, it's the most boring one, but the process there hopefully kind of can key into your brain the way we're going to try to see things for these markets in this game. The second assumption that I want to make for this game is that maybe my model is correct. And if you heard last week, back on Monday, during the First Look podcast, I mentioned how I liked the Niners, the money line there, and I liked the over at 47 and a half. Now, we've seen some movements toward the Niners right now. They're now back out to two and a half, uh, minus 105 on that. And the total is 47 and a half. That stayed the same as it was back on Monday. So the model still likes these values and if we assume that the over does hit that increases the odds that the 49ers cover because more points leads to a wider range of potential outcomes and uh covering inherently implies there are more points scored in the game not always the case because you could see negative script at the end things kind of slowing down if one team is ahead by a lot but the overall thought process of lane points correlates with an over that makes a lot of sense there. So let's make let's make that our first assumption that the model is correct on this game and that the Niners cover and the over hits. We would then ask ourselves what other bets are more likely to occur should this wind up happening. If the 49ers have a lead, it'll mean more dropbacks and more passing volume for the Chiefs. Unfortunately, we can't pair uh, Mahomes pass attempts over. Uh, I, because FanDuel knows those events are, are heavily tied. So if you try to tie in uh, the number of pass attempts for Mahomes, they will not let you add that into your parlay. So unfortunately, we can't go that way because it would be pretty easy to just do that. Same thing goes for the Isaiah Pacheco under rush attempts. And I also don't know if that's really a great bet anyway, given that I do expect to have a pretty good role regardless. We can, though, go to the Niner side and use this from a positive sense and go to Christian McCaffrey. His rushing yardage prop is 91 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. And that's a big number for sure. But in 16 full games, McCaffrey has gone over 91 and a half 10 times. That is a 63% hit rate over 91 and a half. And two of the times that McCaffrey went under were in losses. And again, we're assuming that the Niners win this game because they're covering two and a half. In the 13 wins in that sample, McCaffrey went over 91 and a half rushing yards 69% of the time. The Chiefs are better against the run during the playoffs now than they were during the regular season, but I do feel pretty good about this part. So right now we've got uh, Niners minus two and a half, over 47 and a half, and McCaffrey over 91 and a half. The final leg here could be Isaiah Pacheco under 67 and a half rushing yards. If we do that, that puts our odds at plus 588. However, we're not getting a huge boost there by doing this because FanDuel knows that the Niners covering minus two and a half decreases the odds Pacheco gets 67 and a half. So again, plus 588 is the number if we go with Pacheco under 67 and a half rushing yards. Let's take a different approach to this. The other implication of the Niners covering is more dropbacks for Patrick Mahomes. Dropbacks can lead to pass attempts, but they can also lead to scrambles because Mahomes is not a guy who gets a lot of design rushing attempts. He does scramble, and scrambles occur when there are dropbacks. Dropbacks are more likely when a team is trailing. So weirdly, even though it's a positive prop on a team we're expecting to lose here, it is going to correlate better uh, with a Chiefs loss than with a Chiefs win. So instead of going with the Pacheco under rushing yards, let's go with Mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards. If we do that here, we see this number get to plus 778 uh, for the same game parlay. I think that is the better approach to this one and a much better payout than what we had with the Pacheco under because it's less obvious that these bets are correlated with the Mahomes over and the Niners covering in this game. So to me, 
I think that's the best way to play this thing. And it plays well with our other bets. Uh, works from an assumption with Mahomes running more during the playoffs and running more in negative script. And it's not as obviously correlated with our other bets as a Pacheco under would be. So our four legs here are the Niners minus two and a half, the over at 47 and a half, Christian McCaffrey over 90 and a half rushing yards and Mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards. That is plus 778 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that is a logical parlay under the assumption, again, that the model has things correctly pinned here, which may be an arrogant assumption potentially, but I trust my model. It's back tested pretty well. So I'm fine taking this approach uh, to betting this game at plus 778 for uh, those four legs. The final assumption I want to talk through here is one about usage during the playoffs for these two teams and specifically focusing on the concentrated usages of these two passing games. We've seen that with the Niners always when their guys are healthy, they funnel work to their studs in big games. We know that part, but the Chiefs have done it during the playoffs as well. If we look at three playoff games, Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice both have target shares above 27%. Nobody else is in double digits. Now, that's not a huge surprise, but they've also stopped rotating the other guys, the super secondary guys in this team. Marquez Valdez Scanley actually led the Chiefs and Routes run during the conference championship. His target share of the playoffs is still just 9%, but he's coming out ahead of Justin Watson. Uh, Miko Harbin's out of play. I don't think Katerius Tony's going to play here because he's, uh, he's arguing with them and stuff like that. Not a lot of Richie James. Uh, Watson's target share is 6%. So we're going to start with the MVS of things. He is a very volatile wide receiver because a lot of downfield targets doesn't haul all of them in, as we've seen plenty of times uh, throughout the past couple of years. So I want to take advantage of that volatility. I want to benefit from it. Now, the baseline yardage for MVS is 19 and a half receiving yards. I have no interest in that because he could get zero catches and that would not shock me at all. But the all market to get 40 plus yards for MVS is currently at plus 230. In the two playoff games, uh, the past two playoff games for MVS, he's at 62 and 38 yards. And I, I want to focus on those two because that's since Miko Harbin effectively got shuffled out of the rotation. Now, that's only 50% uh, times going over 40 receiving yards. But this matchup with the Niners is one that favors outside wide receivers because of how good the Niners are up the middle. Fred Warner, I always say, is a black hole and it funnels work towards the outside. So I'm okay taking MVS to get 40 plus receiving yards given the amount of downfield work, the number of routes he's running, and the way he gets the targets that he does earn. As for Watson and that 6% target share, I think that bodes well for a receptions under versus going with uh, the yardage. Because Watson does still get downfield work. If you told me right now that that Justin Watson catches a 50-yard touchdown on Sunday, I'm not going to blink twice. That, that could totally happen. But under one and a half receptions is minus 134. Watson has had two receptions in one out of three playoff games. So that's not going to bother me too much. And again, ran a, about two-thirds of the routes that MVS ran. It should be a bit less than that. Uh, less than two-thirds of the routes that MVS ran during the conference championship. So we'll take Watson under one and a half receptions. That's the Chiefs side. But we can also loop in the Niners here because they do the exact same thing we were talking about before, where they funnel work to their studs in big games. Juwan Jennings is a good player. We've seen that a lot, especially these past two games. He just doesn't get a lot of work when all these guys are healthy. They've had 10 games with everybody healthy. And in those 10 games, Jennings is exactly 10 receptions. So one per game. Now, caveat is that Jennings played in just nine of those. So, but in those nine games, Juwan Jennings had multiple receptions just three times, three out of nine. That means we can build around this tight core assumption and loop in Juwan Jennings as well. Under one and a half receptions for him is minus 140. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, we can pair that with the Watson under and kind of build this into they ride the studs in the big game. So when we loop in the Juwan Jennings under with the MVS uh, all over and the Watson under rece receptions, we get to plus 739 as the same game parlay here. We do get upside the MVS's yardage, the alt market, but the other ones are just assuming the rules stay the same as they've been in these high leverage moments when everyone is healthy. 
It's not a huge leap by any means, but there is a decent payout tied to it. So we'll take that one at plus 739 for MVS to get 40 plus receiving yards, get uh, Juwan Jennings under one and a half receptions and get Justin Watson under one and a half receptions as well. You could put in their yardage numbers there, but given how the way those guys are used and how efficient the Niners offense is, I'd rather shy away from uh, yardage unders for Watson and Jennings because I could see them getting to some yardage overs even if they do get just the one reception here. So again, that's kind of my thought process here with playing same game parlays to the Super Bowl is trying to find bets that play well together, going in with an assumption and asking myself which bets work well if those assumptions do wind up being true. So again, that one was MVS 40 plus receiving yards, uh, Watson under one half receptions and uh, Jennings under one half receptions. That was plus 739. We had Pacheco over six, seven and a half rushing yards, Pacheco under three and a half receptions, Pacheco under 16 and a half receiving yards. And then the other one was uh, the Niners minus two and a half, the total over 47 and a half. Christian McCaffrey over 90 and a half rushing yards and Patrick Mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards as well. That's all we got here for today on covering the spread. As mentioned, though, this podcast feed is loaded with Super Bowl 58 talk, both in the past with Dr. Ed Fang and Joe Ostrowski in the future with uh, Ryan Williams, Tom Vecchio tomorrow night on Thursday. And of course, the live betting preview on Friday with Ed Miller as well. All right here in the covering the spread podcast feed and FanDuel TV plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim Sonis and check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you if you're building that SGPs for Super Bowl 58. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to give our full player prop breakdown of this game. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.